Hello, and this is Electra Pages at Nuremberg 2024 Embedded World. I'm Robin Mitchell, and I'm joined here at the Micro E stand by Neb. And it's great to have you here to see you on the show. Fantastic. So just before we started recording, he was going through some pretty interesting stuff, and I cannot wait to talk to you guys what's going on here. But first, could you introduce yourself, what you do, and what we're looking at today? OK, so um, nice to see you here on our Absolutely. booth. Uh, I'm Neb, I'm running the, this company, MicroE. We are dedicated to standardization and time saving. So how we do, do those things? Through five lines of our products. Mm. One of the most famous click boards, we have 1,600 of them. So just imagine if you have well, a five socket. That's a lot of boards. Yeah, I, that's, <laughs> I, have a, I have even have a, a, a yeah. better numbers. So if you have a five socket, mm. you could make more than 62 trillion unique combinations. In case you spend only one second for each of them to try, you will need 300,000 years to try everything what we have today in the company. So you see, we'll scale a lot. Mm. So for, for an engineer, if you have a, for any, any boards yeah. like this, you just change click boards and make any combination you need. Mm. So let's go further. What we offer and we like to see live in many companies, especially design service universities, is something like remote access to the boards. So we call it Planet Debug. And this this is what you're going through earlier, and this is this absolutely blew my mind. Um, so yeah, please tell the audience what is going on here. So uh, we call it Planet Debug because you could debug board which is on another continent or another town in real time, step by step from any point in the world. So how it looked like in Ecto Studio, it looked like, like this. So this is a live image, a board, which is in completely different country. Mm. So live image, it's live streaming. It's, it's a very simple, uh, simple uh, uh, it's like a HBO. Mm. You know, it's a live streaming of the movie. So this is the streaming of the board. So we have the, the debugger over the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So that's allow us to go step by step through any of the of the code, and that we use through Necro Studio. Necro Studio is our uh, IDE. Yeah. We have twelve compilers inside. We recently had three microchip compilers. So we are very proud on this part of the of the company. So this is the first hardware as a service, first remote access of the board. So you see here. There is a four different microcontroller system. Mm. And on the back, there is a four Wi-Fi debuggers. Yeah. So one camera gives you the four pictures. And, that, and that's where the camera here is doing. So yes. this, is, this, this is looking at the boards yes. and allows somebody to, re to remotely use this hardware yeah, yeah, without yeah, actually yeah, yeah. obtaining it themselves. And when you download Nectar in your hometown mm. and you run any of these boards, mm. Uh, you have boards in Mexico, in North, uh, North America, there is a board in Belgrade. Yeah. So there is a, a, a different places. Yeah. So you will see image of the board and you could program the board, work on the board. So you, that's that's something. Do you know what I like the most about this is that there, there are so many hardware simulators out there. And, and while hardware this is real, and this is this the is thing, real. hardware simulators are OK if you want to if you want to make sure that it might work. But to have the physical boards actually programmable over the internet with a camera so you can see it so you don't have to buy the hardware you obviously rent it out you don't need to build it all up you just have to know how to program it and send the commands of it it's absolutely fantastic and i have never seen anything as impressive as this thank you where is the where is the computer oh yeah oh there is no computer so how it's working without a computer yeah that's <laughs> That's funny. So yeah. that's what we patented. So we patented right. debugging over the so Wi-Fi. This is the back part. So this is, this is, this is what we're looking at here. This one yeah. is using Wi-Fi only. You and don't need, a, no, you don't need a, any, any computer or anything else. And so this, this is kind of the server itself that you're interacting with, yes. essentially. Yes. Like, so yeah. it literally uh, connects mm. you and your code mm. through SSL connection. Yeah. Only object code is going to the board. Yeah. So, so your code is safe on your PC. Mm. 
and connection is SSL. The same, the same security you use for your credit card. Right, so your proprietary code that you might be developing for a product isn't going to be essentially, um, what's the word? It's not stored on the server. No. And it's not going to no. be accessible when it's in transit as well. No. And, and that's one of the things I've never liked about cloud computing in general, because I don't like the idea of storing sensitive materials. Your code on never a leaves your laptop. It's because, only the compiled object code. Yeah. who does not want to invest so many money in, exactly. in the code and then the code sent somewhere. They exactly, exactly. Now, speaking of code, there was something you were going to show me here as well earlier on. I had to stop you because it was... it was. It, so I'm, I'm just going to say to the audience very, very quickly, yeah, there's yeah. one thing that really annoys me all the time is that when you get uh, software libraries for hardware, they're usually very, very complicated. And Arduino did a good thing where they kind of made things simpler. But when you see how you use the software, with these boards using this service, honestly, it's fantastic. Please show the audience what you've done. So what you see here is an Nexus Studio, which is running in debug mode, board which is not in, in completely under, under another country. So what we really like in my career is to simplify. Simplifying is, is my middle name. So what you see here, there is, there is a plot command, and I'm plotting it the light intensity on the place where the board is, which is literally, we create a cloud oh. in one line of the code. Sorry, 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 can I stop you? Yeah. So you can change the light intensity of the server rack onto these so, boards? Well, uh, I'm connected to the board which is in Belgrade. Yeah. It's, the board is not here. So this one is in Belgrade. Yeah, and it's working on a very poor connection on a Wi-Fi, uh, a Nürnberg Messe. So, you know, you know, you know how poor connection is here. So uh, it's not only that it's connected, it's keep the connection. So this is the drawing of the light intensity mm. on the board. And you see it's working now. I'm collecting the date. So we create the cloud as long as you want mm. on any board from any point in the world. And That's if you if you like crazy. data, just to collect data, that, but if you like a graphic, this is the graphics. So one line of the code. You just want to. See, you just need to say, plot what you name it. Your your my sensor data yeah, yeah. and the the value. That's it. That's it. This is this is honestly honestly I'm absolutely. Can I show brilliant. you one more thing? Go for it. Please blow my mind. So go for it. You know that IDE. Yes. Ha uh, have one compiler only. Yeah. But in case of the next one, let's go like this. When you create setup, just a second. Oh, did I? Did I? Oh, I accidentally shut down. You shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So you got the idea here. So uh, actually, this is quite good because we can see it launched up from start. So we know what's going on. So let's get a close in on this. So this is the ID. And so uh, just uh, I'm connect, connecting something like that. Sorry, I, I do something wrong. That's all right. Yeah, so I am do something wrong. Oh, what's going on? Just a second. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I told you the connection here is not open. That's okay. It's, it's crashing. <laughs> yeah, it's crashing because the connection is really low. Yeah. Really low, and that's, that's something which... Well, I would, I, I, I will vouch for that. The as, as great as embedded world is, the Wi-Fi here is absolutely horrendous. And obviously, it's ten o'clock. Everybody's connected. everyone's here. So yeah. Uh, oh, ten o'clock. It's open. Ten o'clock at nine. Ooh, nine o'clock. Uh, I'm not sure. It's nine or yeah. ten o'clock. I think it's nine. Because it's, if it is ten, now everybody came. Yeah. And you start to use the connection. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you will trust me. <laughs> Trust I, him. I like to show you there is this IDE have yeah. twelve compilers inside. Yeah. So we have a Clang, you know. Yeah. Uh, three microchip as well. Yeah. Three XC compiler for microchip. Excellent. So, you know, uh, it does not. It's it's not only that you have a compiler. Mm. Our code base mm. is literally the same for every microcontroller in the world. Mm. So whatever is working on PIC, it's working on ARM. Whatever is working on AVR. It's working yeah. on this part. <laughs> so, you know, it does not need that we spend time uh, from engineer to engineer to, to make the same code. So it's better to use the same code base. Mm -hmm. We are very proud that this microbus socket is accepted uh, 
from uh, more than 100 silly conventions. And it makes complete sense because on, it, it, it's, it's just such a useful way to build to sort of prototype projects by having the same bus that you can connect th different things around so you don't have to keep trying to do unique things for every different sensor or, or piece of hardware you're using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so just imagine this one. If you need smaller one, you just break it. You just break it. You know, so... And then you've got the micro bus right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's an uh, intelligent way how to mm. serve more customers. Mm. Because we, as a company, we are customer-oriented. Yeah. So whatever our customer needs, we will do it. Yeah. Because we are very dedicated to time saving. Mm. So I'm very proud you, you came to our booth and have this... Uh, honestly, honestly, show. the honor is mine. I'm still blown away by the fact that you, it's, it's almost like the idea is simple and yet it's elegant. Yeah. It's, it's an excellent way for people yeah. to test hardware without actually buying it first or having access to all these different boards. It's brilliant. But it, just imagine you and me, we are lucky. Yeah. We have educated. Yeah. We are in, coming from good countries. Just imagine that you are from Southern Absolutely. Uh, Somalia. Yeah. You don't have a DHL. You no. don't have a possibility to buy something. No. So this approach will allow anyone, anyone. from any less happy, yeah. uh, uh, less fortunate people yeah. to learn programming and to do something with their lives. Absolutely fantastic. Now, just before we conclude this podcast, uh, I've got one more question for you. Please. For the audience out there who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with MicroE and the solutions you're providing, what would you recommend to them? Well. For sure, one of the clickboards for start, yeah. because you could use it on breadboard, you could use it everywhere. Yeah. Then it's better to download Nectar Studio. There is a 1,500 fully documented, fully working code examples. And if it's not enough, go to Embedded Weekly. Mm. There is a 1,200,000 something ready to use projects. So, you know. That's a lot of projects. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if something else is missing to you, call me. <laughs> cool, it sounds fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us. It was an absolute pleasure. Good to see you guys. Good to thank see you, you guys. Thank you. Yeah.